So, good evening everyone once again, and um, let's get straight to gesture drawing. Once again, I will be unable to actually interact with anyone while I am doing this, but uh, I imagine that won't be a problem. So, mostly getting to a um, relatively um, good start here. Let's see how it keeps going. Last week I hadn't done any gesture drawing in uh, quite some time. So compared to that, I am uh, much more well practiced today. Even though, of course, the actual amount of practice is still, still quite small. Here we have our first guy of this uh, session, and I don't think we had any last time. As I think I told you, um, I actually worked as a gesture drawing uh, model while I was a student. At least at our institution, the um, ratio of male, male to female was um, about half and half, I think. I don't know how this um, this material is collected. Are these um, professional models? Are they being paid, or are they perhaps um, some sort of exhibitionists who enjoy being watched? Who knows? Uh, I certainly got paid. I actually got paid um, relatively lot. It was. Uh, 10 euros per hour, which was, was um, notably more than uh, I had been paid for anything else at that point. Although, of course, the, the hours weren't particularly um, long. I had a, uh, a single course once per week and uh, it's only a few hours, so I didn't exactly strike rich with that career, but it uh, would have been much worse. And this has to be angled down a little bit, as the uh, other leg has got a different angle than this one. I wonder if watching someone um, do gesture drawing is somehow interesting to audiences. Uh, I know that Ina, of course, does it, but uh, she is, for one, a cute girl, and of course, a much better artist than I am. Although, from an artistic standpoint, I think she comments on 
the actual process much less than I do. So for uh, this is a horrible, horrible angle. It's an extreme, um, extreme angle with a uh, a boot some some kind here. I'm going to try to get some of the leg here in the small amount of time that we that we actually have here. It's uh, extremely difficult. Here we are. More than one minute. I could imagine that might be encouraging for some viewers to watch me struggle with gesture drawing. Um, again, of course, as I am not a uh, particularly good artist, this is uh, perhaps not as uh, encouraging as it could be. But uh, better than nothing, I suppose. I have sometimes bought some of those, and um, you know how some artists sell um, their PSD files as part of their, uh, either as, as single items or as part of their um, Patreon rewards or something like that. I've actually bought some of those. I didn't really find them um, helpful at all, to be honest. Uh, there's probably some workflow things there. Um, this is a weird one. There's a na naked woman with this kind of a happy bird mask. Like one of those uh, lake era gas masks, which uh, of course did not actually um, protect against gases. They were supposed to protect against the uh, um, bad air, which was a uh, the medical concept of the time. It's much like um, some of the humoral medicine, the These uh, bird, bird masks actually sort of work. They worked for something and they coincidentally worked for something else. Uh, they kept parasites and that kind of thing out of the, away from the user. So they ended up being actually useful against the, against the plague, but uh, not for the re there's another extreme pose here. There's a, there's a, a guy in a weird ninja costume, or I guess uh, a cat suit, and he's doing some kind of a... Who knows what kind of a kick this is supposed to be. And wearing this kind of, you know, um, rangy goth boots. You know, imagine a, um, a goth from the 90s. And that's that's what this guy looks like. That's uh, not a good look, I, I think, not for anyone, honestly. Um, although, the more recent Vampire the Masquerade computer game, um, Bloodlines, had some of these in its uh, wardrobe. I think it, I thought it fit the uh, aesthetic of that game uh, quite well. It was uh, a bit anachronistic in any case. And the white wolf um, games are in any case, um, well, at least for me, they are sort of a 90s thing. My, um, most of my experience with them comes from the previous uh, vampire computer game, um, Redemption, which was uh, critically panned, but uh, I, I enjoyed it as a child. That was a bit short. The ass here. You have to wonder what these uh, poses are supposed to be. I think this guy is probably taking his photos at home. He's contorting himself on um, on his floor next to a bed, which uh, honestly hon is, is honestly really weird. I don't I don't know why he would do this. Um, although some of the directorial decisions at the um, art school I worked at uh, were. Somewhat bizarre as well. Um, fairly little, you know, functional poses. But, uh, not my problem. I just have to draw them. 
And the big problem with here we have an um, this person is almost uh, pointed towards us. So I'm going to try to um, communicate the direction that the bones is bones are moving with this um, white triangle. You can't actually see the other arm because she is uh, actually quite. Uh, I'm not quite sure if obese, but uh, certainly not thin. Now, this is just a state of ninja. This is a guy in a ninja costume. And for some reason, they have decided to make this a, um, a vertical image. I don't know why. But uh, luckily, I have one of those um, you know, portable uh, tablet, tablets. And I can just pick it up. I have, I've been holding it in my lab, um, lab anyway. So I can just pick it up and um, turn it in my in my um, lap oh. I think uh, mostly I am holding it in my oh this is a uh, five minute drawing already well time to do a better job at it then That one is just uh, started at too long. This seems like a, a professional studio, more or less. They are well lit. There's um, a white background with. Of course, it might be that this is just some guy who likes to dress up as a ninja and uh, and take photos of himself. But uh, who knows? Unfortunately, with all the black clothing, it is actually um, quite difficult to see where the uh, the clothes actually go. It would be a lot easier if. Uh, well, I mean that's that's the reason that uh, gesture drawing is usually done with nude models. It's just that, that when they're nude, you can see what's happening. Yeah, you honestly have to. Yes, look more at the clothes. He seems to have a belt of some kind, and I don't quite understand why he has this uh, very sharp hold on his ass. That doesn't seem like something that uh, clothes that I generally wear would uh, would do. Maybe he has some kind of kind of padding in his clothes. So here yeah, he has this um, like like a humpback pattern going all over his back and some kind of a cord belt. What exactly is happening with um, behind his leg here? I have no idea. It's all, all just black. Here we have some folds going towards his ass. What exactly is happening here? I don't know. I'm just going to, you know, doodle something there. But then he's, um, I've drawn his leg far too long. There's, um, I think, the um, pants leg might, might be tied around his shin. Uh, it's quite um, thin around the shin. And then there's this um, ropey bit uh, behind the shin or above the shin. Somewhere there. So that's probably a little bit better. His pants are quite short, and I can see some um, some cordage there. So it, it has to be tied in some way. I suppose this is uh, some kind of a tactical ninja uh, as opposed to uh, well 
the Mormon ninja. I don't think the cordage is uh, is a part of the uh, Japanese stagehand costume. That is actually supposedly the origin of the uh, black clad ninja uh, archetype. That uh, at some point uh, some director had the brilliant idea of having the stage hands were dressed in entirely black and uh, were supposed to be ignored by the audience. Uh, commit an assassination as a uh, to communicate the assassin being so um, dexterous and sneaky that no one managed to um, see him commit this uh, assassination. And so this uh, the stagehand costume became a kind of uh, shorthand for assassinations or assassins and that uh, led into the ninja archetype. I don't know if that's true. Um, it sounds believable, but uh, sounds believable and true are often quite different things. And you shouldn't trust things just because it sounds like they make sense. This is a somewhat bizarre pose again. This is a slim young woman who appears to be pretending to be hanging from a um, bouquet of balloons while actually um, sitting on some kind of a pole. I think there are some controls on the on the bottom here that um, are obscuring what's actually happening. I see some kind of a pole, but that's uh, that's basically it. I can't see anything. I can't see how she is interacting with the pole. She has her hand around here. And then there's a mess of the balloons. I'm just going to or some lines towards them as the, as the cables. Uh, her scapula is extremely um, extremely visible here, rather the empty area. There's a bit of um, a bit of a scapula that doesn't really have that much uh, muscle to it. There are some tendons there, but uh, Nothing that you could. Hmm. Really think of as meat. We have the serratus visible, I think. That is uh, not the ribs. The serratus is a, um, a muscle group that comes from below the scapula like this yeah that has to be it. and it has this kind of um kind of digits to it so i think that's what we are seeing there's are some stripes on her side here but uh, in an orientation that i do not think at all that they could be ribs so i think it's the uh, it's ratus the other shoulder is uh, not really visible it has to be somewhere around there. Although, as I think I told you last time, you're not uh, actually supposed to use uh, a priori information or symbolic drawing while doing gesture drawings. Uh, now that I've done it once again myself, perhaps I will do a better job of remembering this in the future. Here we have a sort of... Um, Another tenderness area the thing is that this is uh, around the sacrum, so this uh, the bone that the ass muscles, for example, attached to, is under here, and that is uh, that is a flat area. There is basically no meat there; it's uh, just some tendons on top of the bone.
I can actually turn off the uh, the controls. Now I can see her foot um, a lot better. The other leg must be around here somewhere as it is coming out from here. And the blade of the foot is visible, but not much more than that. The toes are a bit upturned here. And I think I am, except for that I had not touched the head at all, that was uh, quite a successful five minutes. It's a naked old man in a weird pose. Although I I am sure that I have done a similar pose at some um, some stage of my art modeling career. I think this might actually be useful for the um, anatomy portion of this session. Course, I imagine that the um, audience would be more thrilled to see um, some naked young ladies rather than some naked old men. But uh, anatomy is anatomy. We can learn something even if it's not, uh, not a person that you might uh, particularly want to be looking at. Mm -hmm. This has to be backwards a little bit. And he is suspended on his fingertips. Like this. And the other arm is barely visible, so it cannot have a, um, a trajectory that is much different. And the, actually, a bit of the fingers are visible behind this forearm. But we'll get to that. And there's a bit too much uh, empty space here. I might, um, it might be a better idea to use this. Use this uh, gesture line as the uh, as the front face of the, the body. There's the knee that seems uh, looks about right here. Some folding here, and of course there is this leg. It's a bit of a starting curve here. I think that will be the uh, the forward uh, quadriceps, upper um, the thigh muscle that attaches at the. Um, Actually, that attaches at the um, the tip, the wing tip of the um, of the hip bone. This ass is going to be somewhere around here, and after that, his uh, thigh and his shin actually interact quite a bit. There's uh, quite a recurve here. Goes up here, then turns back down, and then there's a slight gap somewhere around here where the uh, the shin, or rather the ankle, by this point, um, separates from the um, from the thigh. And then as to the, the shin, the lower portion of it is mostly straight. And then because of this weird pose, most of the meat 
is pressed forward here. So it looks uh, looks a bit weird, but um, it should be more or less correct. And then the end of his ankle is uh, behind the ass. It's something to pay attention to. And of course, his toes are curled. So this here ends up looking quite short. But uh, and it can might be that these guys um, feet are quite short. Uh, different people will have uh, quite different proportions. Hmm? It somehow looks too thick and at the same time too thin. Well, that's poor luck. I think this line is um, about where his uh, other leg comes. There's a bit of a um, recurve there as well, going into the, the kneecap, which is not visible. And because the knee the structures of the knee are not actually visible, the uh, outline of the knee remains um, quite curved. In this other one here, you can actually, I think I have to um, make this a bit more angular. You can actually see a lot of um, the bones. Whereas on the other side, you can see the... Um, the meat turning away. This is the shin, of course. And again, a bit of a recurve there where the thigh and uh, shin are interacting. It's actually coming from quite a low position. Um, most of this first curve are the adductors, so the muscles that pull will be. the legs together. So I think the legs are all right by this point. Then moving to the shoulders. Shoulders are not uh, quite rounded. You might uh, want to draw them as this kind of uh, kind of block of uh, three curves. And then you get the, um, the biceps. And then a kind of uh, triangular connection here. This seems to be about at the right height. Uh, the, um, the bulging bit here is probably just hanging skin and or fat. I can't think, really think of a muscle that would do this. Um, Except that a couple of muscles on the back side, those uh, do wrap around in funny ways. But uh, let's think about that later. It might be might be relevant, might be not. So you end up with this uh, asymmetrical structure in the forearm because of, uh, as you remember, the muscle up here comes uh, comes in from behind the uh, bicep and on top of the teardrop muscle on the front side of the of the arm that's always a good one to remember and because of that there is um, the cross contour is something like this so then you have some uh, some meat here with the muscle there are only actually a couple of muscles in the hand uh, on the inside and on the outside of the of the thumb mostly uh, other than that it's uh, almost entirely fat and tendons and bones. Actually, the fat patch of the form, of the front of the form, where the uh, fingers connect is quite interesting. Um, this uh, service has a, uh, a function for growing Nipples are around here, so the, um, the breast muscle comes about here, and he's got a bit of a paunch here. Again, with a bit of a recurve here, the abdomen. Um, this is a, a skinny man, but uh, I think he has very little uh, muscle mass, and as a result of that, he ends up um, having this kind of uh, 
sloppy appearance even though is uh, assumably uh, he seems to be quite uh light so he's light but not um let's see lean but not muscular i think that would be the uh the best way to uh describe him Yes, got a bit of a bit of stubble go going on there, but uh, of course that's not particularly um, relevant to us. So here we are. That was uh, ten minutes, and I think this time I will actually be able to use this drawing as a basis for some uh, anatomy. Now, hello, mighty germ and big D eight. Your uh, the amounts. Of of size that you have has changed once again. So, time to get to work. I'm going to drop the opacity on this quite a bit so it's uh, barely visible. And then I am going to just start throwing on top of it. So, um, if I were to start from zero, I would basically, um, if I, well, honestly, if I was drawing this kind of pose from my imagination, it wouldn't, I wouldn't be drawing a pose like this. So let's, um, skip the, um, the part where we imagine I was uh, starting to draw this myself. Um, something that can be useful are bounding boxes. So this is where you, for example, let's imagine you are drawing a person from uh, from above and a bit to the side. You might want to draw something like this to begin with, um, and then start uh, drawing this the skeleton inside here. Um, why might you want to do this? Uh, well, the reason is that, um, as I'm sure you might know, uh, a lot of people have a tendency to draw characters uh, from imagination looking like themselves. Of course, depending on the kinds of uh, character that you want to draw, this might be a good thing, it might be a bad thing. Um, in my case, I actually have uh, a barrel chest. Uh, there are some individuals who are not familiar with this concept. Um, oh, actually, I'm just going to. No, no, actually, that was quite a quite a good um, angle for it. Uh, one part of the human anatomy that uh, varies by climate that is by populations uh, acclimata acclimatized to different climates is the uh, shape of the chest it is uh, sometimes you hear this being called a boat like chest i think boat uh, boat shaped is uh, more of an academic term uh, that was the term that the anatomist who measured my bones for um, as a reference for a uh, research project called it um, in any case, in more northern areas, or individuals with a, an ethnic background in cold climates, let's say, uh, tend to have more rounded chests. Um, this is helpful in cold climates because you have um, less surface area per mass, so you lose less uh, temperature. This is uh, similar to, for example, um, Arctic foxes having this kind of extremely small ears. They also lose very little uh, heat through these small ears. Uh, northern or extreme southern humans tend to have um, shorter limbs as well. So imagine a, a fantasy dwarf. That would be the extreme um, cold adaptation. And on the other side, in the tropics, Populations tend to have this kind of uh, a plank-like, white but not 
uh, deep chests and of course um, long limbs so if you imagine a stereotypical Maasai for example um, it would look like uh, almost like a, uh, a stick figure very tall very um, bony spindly legs something like this of course this is um, this isn't universal in um, Africa either there are populations in Africa that are uh, more robust but uh, being um, plant like and having very long limbs is uh, something that helps you survive in for, uh, in hot weather because you have uh, more surface area per mass you can get rid of much more um, heat that way and of course in the tropics the um, requirements of thermodynamics on human life are the opposite as they are in the arctic this is also the case for foxes so if you see a fennec fox those live um, straight up in the sahara i think they have huge huge ears the uh, fennec foxes are tiny as animals um i think they are like uh, chihuahua sized or or that like um, a large rat or a small cat and they have huge ears if you have seen uh, kimono prints for example you will remember the uh, smug and teasing fennec fox with the huge ears that is the way they are i don't know what kind of personalities they have but uh, they do have those ears and the thing is that uh, I have noticed myself on a number of occasions far too late into the drawing, uh, having drawn a very robust um, chest bone for a character that uh, doesn't really need one or doesn't, um, doesn't benefit aesthetically from having one. And this is a reason to use bounding boxes. So when you draw a thin bounding box, you are going to have to actually um, go through some effort to draw, you know, a huge um, barrel chest inside it. You might have noticed this uh, phenomenon with some uh, professional cartoonists as well. There's uh, an American cartoon series that I haven't seen, so I can't really comment on it, uh, apart from the aesthetics. Called Big Mouth, I think. And all the characters have massive mouths i uh, i frankly think it looks grotesque uh, i'm not quite sure if this is for small children or not but uh, i'm being filtered by the aesthetics but one time the uh, creative lead of this series was uh, on a talk show that i watch and he looked exactly like that he had exactly that kind of kind of weird extremely prominent frankly bizarre looking um, lips and kind of you know those kind of downward turned druggy eyes this isn't i hate to I hate to say it about um, about the person's appearance but uh... oh well i haven't said it about his appearance yet but i have called his character designs grotesque and i am telling saying that uh, he looks exactly like them so not a nice thing to say but if you want to avoid that kind of uh, um, effects um, drawing your characters looking too much like yourself then uh, bounding boxes are a good idea so getting into actually drawing a bounding box for this guy actually let's uh, let's use some some color for this since the major parts of the chest are non-moving you can actually think of this as actually a box uh, he is almost perfectly turned perpendicular to the camera so he would uh, have the inside of his box somewhere behind us i think this is a bit uh, too extreme in my opinion but uh, it's illustrative so then of course you have the the spine here 
and then because he's making an extreme pose we want to have a relatively um straight bounding box for the for the hip bone uh, when you are standing upright the uh, chest bounding box would be uh, angled um, backwards a bit i guess if you uh, imagine the full form being here it would be angled a bit back and the uh, bounding box of the hips would actually be turned back quite a bit uh, probably not quite this uh, uh, much, but uh, you get the idea. This is another one of those differences that are they are a bit different for um, different genders, different populations. Uh, having a uh, pronounced angle here is actually a large part in what makes um, women's asses look big. So women who have a, a larger angle end up looking like they have a big ass independent of whether or not they have um, soft tissue mass on their ass and on the other hand um, the uh, robust male might look something more like this with a, uh, a much less pronounced angle here but there is always an angle there uh, i do remember that and with the meat to end up with uh, this kind of double curve and of course the spine also makes this kind of uh, I think even triple curve it um, joins the skull here turns back turns forward turns back and the uh, this is actually the sacrum here so technically the spine doesn't curve back forward but the sacrum is so integrally connected to the spine that uh, I would count that as a, as a part of the spine. So, um, you might want to draw a kind of bounding box for the arms as well. Uh, I often draw a, um, a bounding cylinder if I if I bother doing it doing them at, at all. It just uh, feels easier to me. And once again, um, this is different for different uh, individuals, but uh, for me, certainly, the actual forearm until the wrist is uh, three-fourths of the length of the uh, upper arm, and the final one-fourth uh, comes to uh, the knuckle level. So this is already... Uh, part of the hand actually let's let's think about this bounding box more than the others the hands are quite an um quite an important part of uh, drawing a human how would they be this would be angled almost towards the camera although it doesn't look like that in my uh, drawing so we might want to have a bounding box something like this that seems fine to me. And then the leg. Um, I think from this image that I have drawn, I can no longer see the photo, but I think this guy has uh, short-ish legs. Take a bit of a measurement here. Not hugely short, but uh, not particularly leggy. And when you are drawing something like this, uh, something like these uh, bounding cylinders, you might want to mark which ends of the cylinder are visible. So in this case, uh, the end of the thigh cylinder on this side. Uh, must be visible as you noticed me drawing and commenting on his uh, knee bones being visible. So that has to be uh, identifiable. Um, this is going to be useful uh, later in the drawing. So I think I'm going to switch the layer a bit here and use um, red for the bounding boxes on his, uh, his behind, the side behind him. 
So here we would have uh, the visible part of the bounding box on the hip side, but of course that is uh, behind and inside his hips, so that will not be visible. One of these legs is coming towards the camera and one is moving away. So we would, um, to make it a bit extreme, we want a development like this. However, um, as usual, the most difficult part is not understanding uh, generally what is supposed to be happening, but uh, actually getting the proportions correct. I think correct proportions is uh, is a big part of uh, making good looking drawings, even if the anatomy isn't that that good. I think good line work and good proportions uh, can make uh, for extremely attractive drawings. Uh, you might be familiar with uh, Hirohiko, perhaps, um, uh, Mr. Araki, the uh, author of uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. He is famous for never um, sketching at all. At least he, he claims that he never sketches. And certainly there are massive um, anatomy problems with his drawings, but nobody cares because other than that, they look amazing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Yoshikazu something, I can't remember his name either, or his, his family name, the author of um, Tsukumomo, is uh, a master uh, anatomist, anatomist. You can see some of his, he has a Pixiv um, account where you can see some uh, raunchy artwork as well as uh, some works in progress. And the works in progress are quite interesting because he's uh, one of the few uh, artists whose works of in progress I have been able to view, who actually does this kind of um, high effort uh, construction drawing. And he draws in the muscles, perhaps not quite as uh, detailed as uh, I draw for you in these um, practice sessions, but he really, he really makes an effort with the, with the muscles. And it shows his art is uh, exquisite. I haven't read Tsukumomo in a while now, uh, since uh, Manga Dex has been down, but uh, if you don't read it, I um, I at least suggest looking up his Pixiv page. So in this one, in this one, his hand has to be angled away. So we want something a bit more like like this not quite not quite should be more or less a mirror of this one so if this if the line is like that then it should be like this this side and end up being like this that's uh, that's looking much better to me. So then we get into the the um, lower legs. Um, so the bone, the structure of the bones in the um, in the knee is that the thigh bone has this kind of uh, rounded rounded thick head, and the thin bone comes out like this. And what happens is that uh, when you turn your knee, the shin bone can actually move into this groove here. So when you have an extreme angle of the knee, you end up with the shin bone, something like this, and the knee cap, which is um, I think usually around both of these ends up being here. And uh, this is the, the knobbly bone structure that I was talking about with his, um, with his knee here. 
So what I want to draw is actually his uh, shin being behind here a bit and partially overlapping with the bounding box for his um, his thigh as the meat is being pushed to the sides to accommodate uh, the bone going into the gap here. There's also a gap in the muscles here. If you um, if you have seen someone um, a lean individual squatting, for example, this uh, the muscles that come come from the ass they attach on both sides of the chin bone and they leave a kind of uh, hole here that allows the um, allows this body for, for this rotation. So the relative lengths of the leg bones. In this position, the shin bone begins a little bit further back than the thigh bone. And the bone ends around here in the drawing. That seems, um, seems good to me. In general, men have a... Uh, a shorter shin bone than they have a thigh bone. Uh, this is again not uh, not the case for all men. But uh, it's generally the case. Uh, of course it might be the case for some women as well. Not all women are have long legs. Um, a rule of thumb that I have noticed while looking at um, individuals is that um, women seem to have a realistic range of uh, uh, thigh bone lengths so that when they turn when they turn the leg up it can come up either um, at its lowest to the arm armpit or at its highest to the um, shoulder level so somewhere between here would be a realistic uh, leg length for a woman um, you can use it as a realistic leg length um, scale for men as well although uh, for men it is uh, the a man would have to have extremely long legs to have them come up to the um, the shoulder level it happens but uh, it's rare so if you want to uh, throw someone who is a uh, runner for example one of those uh, um, plays one of those sports where you jump over fences uh, that might make sense in uh, in general men have uh, shorter shin bones than they have uh, thigh bones uh, for women, it is is more common. Um, I'm not going to go out and say that all women have longer shin bones, or even most women have longer shin bones than thigh bones, but uh, it's much more common for them. So, if you want to draw a kind of idealized, you know, extremely attractive individual with very long legs, um, going up to the shoulder level, and then the shin bone returning to the uh, level of the hip joint. And then the foot coming further down to about um, the height of the the bottom of the hip might be the the kind of size that you would want to go for. But getting back to the actual drawing, um, I imagine see the um, the contact plane of his. Um, hands is somewhere around here so I imagine that uh, his other leg it might not be uh, perfectly symmet symmetric but it's going to end up somewhere inside this uh, this plane I think I'm going to put the put the end somewhere around here that way it's um, roughly the same uh, length as his uh, right shin 
ended up being and of course his um, his feet have to come uh, somewhere around here and move downwards this is not really that important because it won't be seen but of course if you want to practice your anatomy it's it's helpful to um, think about that as well so throwing a bit of a, a foot box here You can sort of build uh, the foot from it's kind of simple, uh, more simple shapes. This is going to be good enough for now. So this is a sort of sort of a bounding box for the feet. And uh, I'm actually going to throw an actual uh, bounding box for the other foot as well. It might not be as useful. I don't know if I'm going to bother. actually throwing this foot but um, hmm. where do we want it somewhere around here I think if you're not confident with throwing it's always better to throw too much than too, too, too little of course if you throw uh, way too much then you end up uh, taking much more time per throwing I've never been a quick thrower in any case so it's uh, just business as usual for me. I wonder if I if I want to start with the uh, with the fingers now or give them for a later stage. Who knows? Well, I'm going to get the sixth uh, third color and. Uh, Use it to draw on his neck. So the the neck has this curve again as part of the recurves of the spine, and it attaches drawing from the side. It attaches here. So you have the face like this, and the jaw comes around uh, until here. Uh, this is what the skull ends up looking like. So you have to cut uh, a part away from the um, ball that you are using to form it. And here's the nose. And there's some lips. And the chin. And the spine attaches here. Uh, it's not at the center of the head. It's not at the back of the head. It's, uh, it's towards the back but uh, not quite centered. So I think his uh, head ball will be something like this, with the uh, two thirds cut out, as uh, we are looking at him in profile almost perfectly. And we will end up with a cut out of something like this. So actually, um, the way that I drew this uh, was already pretty spot on. Good job, me. I uh, don't self-identify as being particularly good at this kind of uh, uh, immediate drawing, and certainly I am uh, bungling the proportions of the cutout here. This looks better. I'm following my uh, gesture drawing a bit more than my uh, attempt at uh, sketching the skull here. Of course, then he has uh, soft tissue moving up around here. So this group can be the uh, the bounding boxes. We can make the sketch even sketchier, and then. Um, make the bounding boxes disappear a little bit as well and then start a new group um, in this group I am going to use the first level to try to take some measurements so um, this cranium ends up being something like around this size and in general people have um, 
upper arm bones that are or is it no i think that's too big let's just throw it on top of, on top here so it's it's something like that that's uh Either I am drawing his skull a little bit big here, or I am drawing his arms a little bit short. Well, let's ignore the head for now. Let's just um, do measurements here. Um, I started talking about the measurements a little bit um, before. So we have basically uh, two. Skull, bowl, um, skull balls for the upper arm and the lower arm, including the uh, hand. So if you have a fist, it would uh, end up here. And raise this up about halfway here. Then moving along the um, along the chest. Uh, this is also a good reason to just practice throwing balls and boxes. They are useful even when throwing humans. Around two. That's um, almost three on his uh, chest here. That's longer than uh, usually idealized, but uh, I don't think that's uh, large enough to be a problem yet. Yeah. And then, well, let's redo these. They look look a little bit little small to me again. Drawing balls is something that I uh, honestly should do more. I usually only end up, I usually only do it um, while they making these kinds of uh, measurements. These are going to overlap a little bit. And here it appears that his legs are far too long as measured. Um, or maybe his. Um, his arms are far too short. There's four balls um, for the four balls for the uh, chest and hips. It's in order. Uh, four, uh, we have five now, and four balls for the uh, leg. This ends up being around the uh, around the armpit level. So this is this is just fine. Everything is in order. We want the um, lower leg being a little bit shorter we might um, want it to be uh, say four balls including the uh, length of the feet this is again this is fine the chest and um, and legs are fine in proportion to each other in my opinion but the uh, the hands might be short now the question is whether i want to uh, change some of this maybe punch it up so that the The uh, arms would be that long. That's starting to look um, a bit too long. Certainly doesn't fit the image of this person that I have in my head. So let's just uh, keep going. Maybe he did have a uh, short, uh, a bit short uh, limbs. So then let's start viewing the. Uh, the bones at the um, the chest bone here the bone whose name I can't remember uh, the sternum is about here does we remember the ribs flare out from it uh, my ribs actually flare out quite a lot but uh, since we couldn't actually see this uh, this person's ribs sticking out, uh, we can't really know how much uh, he's do. So let's just draw a kind of a mediocre layer here. And once again, uh, drawing more than you need is always a good idea. This kind of 
throwing through is the kinds of um, cheat code that uh, artists have. When you draw things that you can't see, you have a much better chance of getting their structures correct. So then, we have um, the circle around here, one third to two thirds, and it comes as a kind of a, a tail towards the middle of the of the hip. And then the wings of the hip bone come from the sternum, they come forwards, not quite to the, fore, um, to the front. So looking from above, the cutoff is uh, something like this. So uh, I think it will come to around here. And then uh, dips down to around halfway. And this is where the pubic bone is. The pubic bone is uh, well, connected with all the genitals, of course, so uh, his genitals would be hanging from below the pubic bone. Of course, uh, from this angle we are, do not see them, and uh, I don't think the uh, terms of service for um, Twitch.tv uh, would enjoy me throwing uh, broken balls anyway. So let's just forget forget about them. On the behind um, of the hip, here we have a, a sort of a hook and a lot of muscles attached to this. So um, if you want to use this kind of anatomical method to draw, uh, including the hook is uh, an excellent idea. And then we have the rings here. These have a hole in them, which isn't particularly useful for us, but uh, it can be helpful for uh, visualizing things. And then the hip joint is somewhere around here. And of course, this is where the um, thigh bone attaches. So then I think I actually want to start using colors again. Is we're going to have um, overlapping structures here. Let's start with uh, blue for the front, maybe a little bit of a lighter blue. Too light. From this angle, the geometry of the thigh bone is going to be a bit difficult to draw. Uh, it comes mostly out and a little bit backwards, I think. We end up with something like this. And of course, we end here, probably somewhere around here, uh, including the bounding box. We want to have our, we want to have a bit of our plane here visible. And then let's draw the curving part as well. And then, um, then the bow. So it ends up looking, looking something like this. And then I'm going to draw the same on the other side for the other leg. I think this one might be angled a little bit less out so it might end up being around here so not quite as much um, outside and here we have the um, thigh bone for the other side so then let's get a bit black back to blue and we have uh, two bones in the lower arm uh, lower leg just as we have in the lower arm as well. The uh, drawing this kind of mnemonics can be quite useful when you can't quite remember which side something attaches on. So going by this, um, 
my recollection is that the major bone of the lower leg is uh, in the middle here and that it attaches on the inside of the ankle so somewhere around here uh, this one has a a bit of a robust structure at the top and at the front here that is um, part of why the meat behaves something like this and it curves towards the outside a bit so here and then back Yes, hoping that I am um, drawing this right the right way around. I'm not uh, entirely confident of that at the moment. And then if I remember correctly, the inside of the ankle is caused by the, uh, the smaller bone here, the spindly bone. And these bones um, play a relatively small part from this angle. Um, the curve of the uh, major bone here can help you um, have a, a dramatic uh, form. A kind of a, a ray curve to the leg that can look quite nice. Um, particularly if you are good at exaggerating, which uh, I don't self-identify as being. So here we have uh, again the major bone that's going to come up somewhere around here on the inside after curving a bit outside. Then we have the other bone on the outside. You can imagine the um, ankle being sort of a wheel that turns between these um, bone tips here. And the bone tips are the protrusions on either side of your uh, ankle. You can, uh, you can just feel them. So, and then moving on into the arm bones. Let's see, we have the clavicle around uh, not red. I want to use blue. The clavicle again is going to be quite difficult to draw from this um, angle from above. It has a form like this. So it curves along with the, uh, the chest and then straightens uh, into the shoulder. However, the part where it is straightening into the shoulder is basically coming um, directly at us. So it will be um, quite difficult to, to see. Then we will have the, um, the scapula of this side as well. And the scapula is going to come something like this. Then as this is moving directly towards us, it is extremely difficult to make it um, understandable. How it, um, how it curves around here, especially when part of it is, is going to be obscured behind the uh, thing here. And the, the shoulder joint is where the um, scapula and clavicle um, meet each other. the bone of the upper arm is actually not that uh, dissimilar to the bone of the upper leg uh, it comes out a little bit from the uh, knob that it attaches to and uh, has this kind of bulge towards the um, the front uh, not towards the back like the uh, upper leg has, although it 
technically the uh, mechanism here is quite similar because the um, when you uh, turn your arm up, your lower arm um, articulates here into a similar gap as the lower leg does when you turn your lower leg up. So, and for mirror image of it. Yeah. Anyway. Mm. Probably a bit helpful to turn yourself, twist yourself a bit when you're making uh, drawing a difficult position like this. I have come to the conclusion that the that this inside uh, knob of the upper arm bone is going to be more or less facing the, the camera. You might be able to deduce this, for example, particularly here where we are drawing from uh, a model. You might be able to deduce this from the positions of their soft tissues. But uh, as I cannot see the photograph anymore, this is uh, not going to be that helpful for me. So then again, we have two muscles for the lower arm. Like with the lower, lower leg, the major bone is in the middle, but it comes to the inside of the yeah, it comes to the inside of the wrist. So in this case, it seems to again be um, analogous to the lower leg, and then the smaller spindlier bone in the case of the lower arm this is the bone that actually moves when you uh, turn, turn your hand up or down this one attaches to the outside so in the same way that it does in the uh, in the leg and it attaches to the upside the um, upper side of the uh, wrist However, in this position, it has rotated. So there's a kind of, kind of a, a crossing action going on here that uh, doesn't can't happen quite as much with your with your feet. You, I, I can only rotate my feet about uh, forty five degrees and my um, hands about ninety degrees. Then. Um, you can either conceptualize the wrist as a uh, part of the uh, palm form, or you can draw it as its own uh, small bounding box here. I usually draw it as a bounding box. There are like, I think, 12 or so uh, little bones there that allow the, uh, the wrist to rotate in a complicated manner, but those are not really helpful for or interesting to draw. Then we have the four bones of the palm, uh, and the thumb also attaches to the um, to the wrist bones. Uh, inside the palm, the finger bones cannot move. Well, apart from when they move, the wrist is being turned, so the entire hand moves. But they can't articulate uh, separately in the way that the actual fingers can. So, then we have the actual fingers. Which finger is the longest is uh, dependent on, on a few things. Uh, in general, the length of the longest finger is actually long um, the same length as the um, wrist bone to the, um, to the knuckles here but the thing is that uh, actually a large part of the I have to draw mine a little bit longer here uh, a large large part of the uh, first knuckles are actually obscured uh, there is so much meat in the form that you won't be able to see them very well The fingers have sort, uh, end up with a sort of a fan structure like this, but which one of them is um, the middle finger is generally always the longest. 
but whether or not the uh, index finger or the ring finger is longer is uh, dependent on uh, your anatomy, of course. And this is one of those cases where there is a statistical difference between men and women, but uh, there are generally men will have uh, a longer ring finger and generally women will have a longer index finger but again this is uh, the distributions are something like this or probably not even that different they are going to be something like this so this is um, statistically significant but uh, if you are drawing a person from um, a photo or live model or if you are inventing a character, it really doesn't matter. You can just draw them um, as equally long. That's probably the easiest way. If you want to give some sort of a, um, you know, subtle characterization, you have a, you know, massively powerful macho character or something, you might want to make the, um, the ring finger longer because the ring finger being longer is an index for prenatal testosterone exposure which isn't the same as uh, current testosterone levels of course but uh, a lot of people don't know that difference so if you draw a character with a, a long ring finger a lot of the audience will probably just think oh yeah that's that's a macho and being correct is less useful than uh, communicating the idea that you want to communicate to your audience anyway so then on the other side, uh, here we actually, I think we, I think here we have to have the third like this and the straight part like that. So it looks uh, supremely confusing, but is, is likely to be more or less helpful. But of course, in this case, we are going to have the, um, the bulge on the far side. So this is more um, easy for us. We have the large bone here that is going to the inside, so away from the thumb. And then again, the small bone is going to be on the outside and it is going to come to the inside. Uh, you might want to notice that the attachment of the uh, spindly bone on the wrist side is much larger than the attachment of the more robust uh, static bone. I don't think this comes up a lot uh, while drawing, but it can be interesting. And then we have the um, rounding box for the wrist, and then the arm bones and the thumb bone is about two thirds of their length well the main thumb bone and then you have the articulating thumb bones in this case the fingers are going to be moving away from us so they are much more difficult to both um, see and draw all right um you will draw the scapula in as well I don't think it's going to be uh, it's going to come up at any any point honestly but why not that's looking pretty good and then a little bit of a detour for the head now let's try to get the um the cranium a bit better this time i think the rotation of this device is uh, what's Not quite round again. Yeah, well, not, not being quite round is not a real problem, but uh, if you are trying to get it round, then of course you want it to be round. So one here, one here, one here, and uh, another one here. Looking all right. The door attaches here, comes forward to about here. Again, uh, other way around here. The spine comes here. 
we might want to draw a bit of um, a frontal bone that is um, forehead bone for this uh, person as he is a man and we might want to give him a bit more of a brow ridge than a, um, we would draw for a woman. A bit of a broad pointed chin. Well, I think that's uh, probably enough for the bones in the head. I didn't actually um, do much work for it, but uh, who cares? Then let's uh, take a look at the at the pit bones. So you can imagine the articulation of the foot being a kind of a, a wheel that turns uh, between the uh, the lower leg bones. And then. Um, there is more of an arch on the inside, although even this arch is not particularly strong. Uh, on the outside, there is almost no arch at all. I think this curve is a bit, uh, a bit wrong here. Even if there isn't much of a curve, we, we don't want it to. We won't, don't want to draw it as uh, uh, too curved outside. Actually, let's let's throw this um, a bit longer here. Um, as with the hands, thing is that the actual bones of the uh, of the foot begin quite uh, early in the foot. So uh, when you have when you have the ball of the feet and then the ankle, something like this. Uh, actually, the um, toe bones start inside here already. So there's a, a large part of the um, toe bones are obscured by me, as is the case for the for the hands on the inside as well. So if you actually want to draw these kinds of uh, you know a rotational axis for the Um, toe bones, it has to be relatively deep inside the uh, the forefoot. That seems seems fine to me. And then let's um, do something similar on the other side. In this case, we have much more curvature on the inside, but uh, it's not going to make much of a difference because we will not be able to see it. Something like this. I'm going to make more of an effort for the right leg that we can actually see that one. So. Um, at this point, I think we can uh, switch off the bounding boxes entirely. And then we have uh, this group for the bones. We can turn down the opacity on that a little bit and start a new group again. Uh, this one's for the muscles. Then, So let's try to remember once again what kind of muscles there are in the body. Starting with the um, deepest muscles. You have a kind of a curtain muscle in the the lower leg. In some areas of the lower leg, this is uh, this is the only muscle that you will be able to see. There's of course a similar one on the other side. So and then the uh, deepest muscle on the upper leg is again a kind of curtain muscle. These are the adductors. They attach to the um, the ring here, the bottom of the ring, and they come up to meet with the attach to the entirety of the leg and uh, to towards the inside of the knee. So these are not very visible from this angle. 
but they will be relatively visible from the other one. So this time we have something like this. And the attachment point is on the inside of the knee. So we end up with something like this. And this is a muscle that we will be able to see on the inside of this thigh. And uh, this is also what gives the... This is kind of like the third muscle group of the low, lower, um, lower arm in that it gives the upper leg its um, non-symmetric form. All right, so next, let's uh, take a bit of a look at the arms. We have a um, we have a teardrop shaped muscle on both the inside and the outside. And this is of course the case for the other side as well. The teardrop muscle on the back side is uh, part of the triceps, so the uh, the muscles that extend the arm, while the the one on the inside is um, a colleague of the biceps, so it turn, um, turns the um, upper arm up. So if you are doing curls at the gym, for example, you are using both of these muscles. Then what do we have? We have a bit um, in the neck coming from the base of the skull into the clavicle and turning back a little bit here. There's going to be the same one on the other side, but since it, this is basically in profile, it's, it's not worth throwing that one. There's the uh, sort of a curtain muscle of the abdomen. These are actually the abdominal muscles. They relatively they, they follow the curves of the rib cage and the insides of the wings of the hip bone quite well. Uh, the center point is going to be around here. At the upper side, you have this um, upper part that you can basically only see on uh, bodybuilders or Greek sculptures. The upper part divides into two parts, as does the lower part, although the Absolute lower parts are uh, seldom um, identifiable. So if you hear someone say that the person had an eight pack, uh, they mean that the uh, they had uh, little enough fat that uh, this separation was identifiable as well. It's uh, not bullshit, but uh, it's it's more real. So. And then there's uh, one of the uh, side muscles attaches like this. You can think of this as uh, starting at the highest point of the wing of the uh, hip bone and going to the lowest point of the rib cage. So what do we have then? Then we might like to add the, the chest muscles. These divide along the sternum, so again we will not be able to see the one that is behind us or behind him, but this is not a problem. These attach around one sixth of the way up uh, down the uh, upper arm. Uh, this is around uh, the bottom of the knob of the upper arm bone, so this is uh, relatively easy, easy to remember. The chest muscles have two pieces, uh, one on the top here and one on the bottom here. They attach at the same point, but they also there's also a bit of a, a fat pad here that gives, uh, gives some volume in the case that the individual has um, volume to speak of. Uh, this model actually had very little uh, identifi identifiable volume here. So, what else might we want to throw in? I think we have to turn this off and then use uh, maybe the green color for items that are 
lower down here. There's uh, a muscle that comes from the, the head of the scapula and attaches around here. This is actually um, often quite visible, kind of a part of the opposite um, structure of the breast muscles. So one of the muscles that pull it the, uh, the back, backwards. Then we have actually, we actually do have a uh, another car curtain muscle here along the back. This is not going to be particularly visible in this um, pose. And between the um, scapula, there are a couple of bulges that again with this uh, geometry are not going to be particularly visible, but let's draw them in anyway. So I think with that, we are more or less done with the deepest muscles. I'm going to take this as a group again and uh, make it a bit less uh, opaque. And then start on the, the muscles that come a bit higher up. So. Let's throw in a little bit um, of the thigh muscles. There are two groups of muscles that attach at the head of the thigh bone. One of them comes to the inside of the of the knee and the other one to the uh, outside of the knee. Of course, the one that uh, goes to the outside has to curve a lot more. In a muscular individual, this is uh, quite noticeable. But um, in this model, it was not quite as noticeable. It blended with the um, other knobs of the, of the knee there. But let's throw them in anyway. We can just throw them small. And on the other side, we we'll have attachments here and here. And they go here and here. Okay. One goes directly. The other one curves actually quite a bit. Uh, this is a large part of why the thigh has this kind of curve seen from this uh, this angle. Seems that my computer is uh, running hot again for some reason. Hopefully the uh, microphone is positioned far away enough that the uh, sound quality doesn't get uh, too strongly affected by that. So then on the other side, on the back side, uh, you have the the hamstrings are the large muscles of the back of the thigh. Uh, these are actually extremely similar to the uh, muscles that we just drew. These attach to both sides of the lower leg bone here, and these are actually what pull pulls this uh, pulls the leg up. Uh, they attach to the hook on the. Uh, on the hip bone. And of course, they will be the same on the other side. Uh, but with that, we are basically done with the with the muscles of the behind of the upper uh, upper leg. There will be some more on the uh, top and the inside, but the back is basically done. So then we have the second level of the um, musculature of the lower leg. Uh, this is much more massive. This begins uh, at the knee and it curves um, on the outside. This is most of the uh, asymmetry of the musculature here. So like this. And of course on the other side it's going to be the same way. Mostly on the outside. So of course it won't be visible from this viewpoint. There's, uh, there was some meat around here. I think that's going to come from the, the top level of the uh, lower legs. So. Uh, what do we have in addition to this? We have some more muscle here 
at the top portion of the of the site this is what ends up forming the um, belt of Ad adonis on muscul muscul muscular men um just basically between the between the waist and the wing of the hip bone at this level we might want to throw in the serratus that comes in from um underneath the um the scapula again it has this kind of radial finger like structure uh, if we are, talk we are talking about the bodybuilder this might be visible um, in many cases it is not and then there's um, hmm. i think i'm i uh, probably i probably drew this uh, this muscle here a bit um, short originally probably should be a bit higher this might be might come uh, forward a little bit as well so that seems seems fine so what do we have at this point um on the upper arm front we have the biceps uh, the two heads this attaches at the knob of the upper arm bone and at the hook in the clavicle and it attaches down here in the in the more gracile bone the one that moves and with this we are also done with the um front of the upper arm on the uh, other side we have uh, similarly a muscle that attaches to the knob on the knob of the upper arm bone and to the scapula the one on the inside is uh, is the one that attaches lower so it ends up be, uh, looking something like this and with that we are basically done with the upper arm uh, here then let's uh, try to do it on the other side on the inside is the one that attaches to the clav uh, clavicle at the scapula so it ends up being something like this and on the outside is the one that attaches to the uh, knob of the of the bone and that uh, stops higher up so you end up with something something like this so the teardrop muscle behind the upper arm is uh, kind of the middle portion of the uh, triceps group and then you have the two others uh, on either side of it um, on the front of the upper arm the uh, biceps comes on top of the teardrop muscles on the back the other triceps come around it at this point we might want to start adding in the um, muscles of the forearm there are basically two groups uh, two major groups one of them comes from the inside and goes to the inside so here we have the inside and here we have the inside in this position the uh, the curvature is lost and the outside to the outside this one has more curvature that would happen somewhere around here um, and then additionally we have the one bundle that comes from between the biceps and the teardrop muscle at this point um, and it goes to the the thumb it comes out of the outside so yes i am um spin, uh, twisting my arm here to um confirm for myself that there is actually there is a huge amount of cross movement in this muscle in this pose so like this so two of the three groups have a large amount of cross movement and the third one um, is spanned um more or less straight so once again here we have the um 
inside to inside this one is straight and i thought, don't think we are going to be able to see the other one so let's let's not flutter the drawing too much with that with that we are done with the muscles of the arms um, at this point, we are missing some of the back muscles and um, some of the neck muscles and the ass and in general the hip muscles. Um, I think we might actually want to uh, start a new um, layer for those. They can be quite uh, difficult. So the large back and neck muscle is uh, kind of cross shaped actually comes um, comes up here to the shoulders if you look at someone from the front they are going to have the clavicle then they are going to have a gap here and then they are going to have this uh, shoulder muscle so this is the muscle that we are drawing in right now uh, this comes uh, up to the top of the clavicle um, scapula on the back side and then it makes a sort of a cross here along the um, along the back we are not going to be able to see much of it so in addition to that there is the um, the long muscle of the back also attaches um, here up top and um, when you are looking at an armpit um, the front part is uh, made up by the um, breast muscles and the back part is made up by this muscle. This is uh, very poorly visible from this angle, but uh, if we're going to do this every week, then I suppose it's going to uh, come up in a better angle at some point. Uh, and it attaches to the um, basically to the backs, back and uh, along the wings, uh, back part of the wings of the hip bone. We end up with the uh, tenderness area around here that I talked about in the uh, during the gesture drawing. It can have a sort of a trapezoidal, uh, like a, a, a form like this. Uh, this part is the scapula, and this part is going to be um, along the curtain muscle, but. Uh, before getting any of the larger muscles on top of it there so something like this and then the hip muscles we get something from the uh, wing to the uh, knob of the thigh bone we get a teardrop from the front here and then we get the ass muscle itself it uh, attaches about one third of the way down and it follows the wing inside of the wing of the hip bone and the sacrum and after that it bulges forward to attach something like this that's the that's the ass uh, in addition to this, we actually we are missing something from the um, upper thighs as well. There's the uh, third thigh muscle that attaches at the middle of this uh, edge of the thigh, um, of the hip bone. Comes up up like this, and of course on the on the other side as well. And then we have another muscle that attaches to the um, point of the wing here, but that goes on the inside. So we are not going to be able to see that. So what are we missing here? Well, of course, some muscles of the neck that uh, are somewhat too complex to draw. I'm just going to draw it as a, as a tube here. And then the shoulders shoulders i think i i am going to take um once again a new color for the shoulders let's use a use a dark gray for this um like we talked about last time the here is the edge of the uh, scapula this is the clavicle 
and we basically have three zones here and we have a uh, a medial portion a forward portion that is is uh, the highest up and the behind portion that is the lowest down uh, all of these move a little bit so if you make like um, if you put your arm up and uh, turn your fist towards um, forward when you uh, move your fist up and down you will be able particularly in the um, in the mirror you will be able to see that this uh, mass of muscles follows the angle of this uh, this movement so if your fist is pointed say 45 degrees up then you will basically get a 45 degree angle back here as well so that the front is 45 degrees angled up from the back of the shoulder plane however in this position they are the muscles are more pulled tense so they are almost as um as close to the uh, to the bone as they can be so we are not actually going to get that much uh, movement out of them we are just we just end up with this kind of uh, identifiable structure here. All right. Um, I'd like to talk about. Well, I, I am going to talk about the fat pads in the hands. It is not going to be particularly um, useful since they are so small in this um, drawing. Uh, at some point, I'm sure I'm going to do a, uh, a hands just a drawing session and at that point I can talk about the fat pads of the hands uh, a lot more uh, but the thing is uh, we have two muscles connected to the uh, thumb here particularly on the inside on the outside it's more of a plane and then on the inside we have a fat pad on along the uh, edge of the form here and if you uh, make um, if you look at your hand something like um, like this with the fingers up here the thumb something like this you notice that there's a gap gap, gap here uh, this is a, a fat patch um, this is the large muscle there is a, a, the flat muscle is behind here we can't see it and uh, this here, this is the uh, more difficult fat pad of the hand. The thing is that when we look at the hand from the side, so this is inside the hand, here's the thumb, and we have the first, um, first bones here. This fat pad starts at the knuckle here on the inside but uh, on the outside but on the inside it uh, goes down to almost the middle point of the um, first finger bone so you end up with uh, a fat pad basically here on the inside of the uh, of the first um, on the inside of the beginning of the first finger bones that can make uh, drawing hands quite uh, confusing and that's actually a good reason to uh, learn about and think about uh, the anatomy of the hand as you will uh, if you want to draw you will have to draw it a lot and when you understand what's happening in there it's it's just easier let's let's fix this here a bit the uh, uh, the curtain muscle is like this and from this angle Actually, very little of the of the large muscle is seen. The way I drew it, drew it before was a little bit bad. So then, what do we have on the on the feet? We basically have um, a similar fat pad as this uh, at the ball of the feet. But um, I'm not familiar with the, not quite as familiar with the anatomy of the foot as I am with the hand. The hand is more important and is easier to look at your own hand than your own foot. All right, 
I think it's um around time to start uh, inking this, so to say. Uh, that's the bones. We want to keep the bones. These are muscles as well. Let's just make both of them around 30%. And then uh, start a sort of inking layer here. Uh, how much of these muscles are actually identifiable is, of course, dependent on uh, how muscular the person is. This person wasn't very muscular, so um, honestly, I shouldn't be throwing that much definition into the muscles. But as this is, uh, we are talking about anatomy here, I'm going to um, exaggerate it a little bit. So here we see the teardrop muscle. Okay, some of the... Uh, structure of the back side of the arm. Here we see the uh, some structure from the, uh, the rotation and the uh, asymmetry of the lower arm here. There's a more curve on the outside. At this point, if you are watching this uh, afterwards, you will be able to compare the um, curves of this um, finally drawn uh, lower arm to the sketch of the model that was visible earlier that I cannot, um, I'm not going to look at it anymore. And you can um, judge for yourself um, how good of a job I've, I've done here. I'm just going to um, ink this pseudo ink this and uh, and be done with it it's been a couple of hours already it's actually um it seems that this is a very useful way for me to get myself to concentrate on drawing for a longer time of course it's 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 not ideal ideally you would like to have a uh, say half an hour every day instead of a couple of hours per week but uh, Drawing like this has been fun, so I'm uh, pretty bad at actually starting to draw, and uh, perhaps some some non-ideal, um, let's say a, a bit unideal drawing schedule is uh, better than not drawing at all, which is unfortunately um, relatively often the case um, case for me or has historically been the case for me. Um, I actually started drawing in middle school because there was a uh, an art girl in my uh, school class that I wanted to impress. Unfortunately, it turned out that she was uh, a bit of a bad person, honestly. So in a way, it's uh, a shame that I went through that kind of uh, effort for her. But the way things ended up, uh, I ended up um, being quite interested uh, in drawing, if, even if I was not particularly good at it. And because I am not particularly good at it, um, I've had these kind of starts and stops that uh, I have not been drawing systematically every day for decades now. If I was, I'm sure I'd be a much better artist. Instead, I have been... Uh, I've had uh, periods of years in between where I didn't draw at all. Men generally have less uh, fat on their ass, so a man's ass will be uh, more angular than a woman's ass, even if both of them have uh, similar amounts of, uh, of muscle. So what do we have here? What do I want to draw in? The teardrop muscle is often 
visible on muscular people so let's um, translate in a little, a little bit i think uh, from this point on we are going to follow the uh, the backside muscles here so i might want to draw a bit of a control curve here and then um, maybe a bit of a bit of uh, a line here to show the curve of this muscle and then of course the uh, the nobly bits here There's probably a more of a gap here than the actual person had. Um, I think he had uh, more more fat on his upper um, leg than I have drawn in here. Oh, actually, I have neglected to draw in the um, the final uppermost muscle of the uh, of the upper leg. Let's do that now. Is that is what is going to be bulging here? Um, and this is what really compresses when you um, bend your leg like this. There are two of them on either side. Of course, only one of them is going to be visible in this position. And they are basically from, let's say, one sixth to four sixths of the um, lower leg. That's going to be helpful, more helpful on the other side. On this side, they are going to bulge out a bit, of course, but not uh, as strongly as they might. I imagine you would get a bit of a, a bulging uh, contour curve here. And you get uh, a knob here by the points of the long bones by this point i have forgotten uh, which of these um, grain lines are supposed to be facing us and which are supposed to be facing away this is a, a classic problem and because of this you might want to calibrate your pencil pen to be uh, a bit less a, a bit more stiff so that you can more easily um, alternate between your uh, line weights i've uh, used a uh, line weight that was too strong for this uh, operation something like this no well good enough good enough for government work none of you are paying a penny to be to be hearing this um, rambling anyway so if it's good for you then that's uh, that's plenty here we have the um, that one muscle that was not visible on the other side, but it will be visible on this side. Or I guess it, it is visible here. And then the main thigh muscle, the bone here. So, and here, this is where we have the um, the adductor muscles. I think it is um, actually starting to be more or less finished. Here we have this one and uh, this one. There's something here. And a bit of a skull here, mandible, a frontal bone. Um, if you look at my self-portrait here, you might notice that uh, my frontal bone is uh, a bit too prominent in the drawing. This is actually because I started out with a black and white drawing and then ended up making it colored. And in the case of the frontal bone, I have the curve line for it in the line art as well as in the shading. I should really um, remove one of those. And I imagine I'm going to do it at the point when I actually work on my model again. At some point, I'm going to make small 
changes in it so it just uh, turns its head instead of uh, being mirrored entirely. So our skeleton man ends up looking something like this. Maybe not a, um, a huge success, but um, I'd say I'm more or less uh, satisfied with this. I think I remembered all of the muscles. Uh, the belly here looks a bit weird, but uh, honestly it did look weird in the photo as well, so can't complain. So then, actually... Let's switch everything else off and just look at the, uh, the final, final line work here. Seems fine. I mean, the, the important bits are there. But then let's, uh, let's actually put everything back for when I um, export uh, an image of this for my Twitter. But anyway, that has been two hours. I think this is um, this is enough for now. Thanks to everyone watching uh, afterwards on YouTube.